Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is Lecture 1H, which is a short video that I made. I call it deconfusing because it's made in recognition of the fact that the three processes we've been talking about, DNA replication, transcription, and translation, are really intrinsically very confusing. And you have to work hard to keep everything straight. So this video is an attempt to clarify things by pointing out what are the common features of all three processes that make them so easy to confuse, and what are the distinct, distinguishing features between them which make it so important to keep them straight. Now, we're talking about three processes, potentially confusing, but in different in very important ways. DNA replication makes a DNA copy of the DNA. Transcription takes the DNA information and turns it into an RNA version with RNA information. Still nucleotides, just slightly different ones without an extra oxygen and with a U instead of a T. Translation takes the information in RNA, turns it into information in protein. Now, why do these things matter? DNA replication matters to make more cells. This is how heredity works. This is the fundamental process of heredity. Transcription produces the intermediate. It's For most genes, this is the limiting step that determines whether they get expressed or not. So this is where most of the regulation happens. Proteins, the products of translation, they're the machinery that gets just about everything done in the cell and then thus in our bodies. So I made a text analogy of the three processes just to sort of provide one more distinguishing perspective on it. So we've got a sentence here and the sentence says the fat cat the fat cat ate the big bad rat and it's flanked by two signals for starting here and here and two signals for stopping here and here. And these control how the information is used. Now, in DNA replication, none of these signals matter. DNA polymerase does not read any information from the DNA that it's copying. It just copies it accurately. So DNA replication makes a complete copy of the whole string of text that we started with. Transcription reads the initial signals, the start signal, the stop signal, and it makes a copy of the information in between in the language, still a nucleotide language. It's a variant of the language, like a dialect. You can think of RNA as being a dialect of DNA. So this is made in RNA. And then translation takes this sequence uses the start here signal and the stop here signal and takes the information in between and translates it into a completely different language. In this case, I uh, used Google Translate to translate it into Korean. That's the text analogy. Now, I extended this analogy beyond translation to include protein folding. There's our Korean protein, Korean text folded up, and to include the activity of the protein. In this case, our sequence instructs the cat, who's fat, to eat the big bad rat. I know it's cute. So, why are these processes so important for genetics? Well, as I said, DNA replication is a central act of heredity. As we'll discuss in Module 2, it's also how mutations happen, where all genetic variation comes from. Transcription is the regulatory process. Translation, proteins do everything. So if they're so important, why is it so hard to keep them straight? Well, because they're also very, very similar. And I've got here a schematic diagram that would apply to any of these processes, to DNA replication, to transcription, or to translation. So there are there is a template, which is, in all cases, the template 
is a polymer of nucleic acids. That's the bases. It's a polymer. And then it has a sequence of some combination of the four bases. Um, it could be the four DNA bases. It could be the four RNA bases. Um, so A, G, C, T if it's DNA. A, G, C, U if it's RNA. The template has some sequences that say start here. And it has some sequences that say here's where you stop. There's a molecular machine in every case, in transcription, translation, and DNA replication. There's a molecular ma machine, which is usually a complex of a large number of highly sophisticated proteins, and sometimes with RNA as well. Um, and this machine is going to move along the template, and it's going to read the base sequences in the template and use that information to synthesize a new polymer whose sequence of bases or amino acids is specified by the template. So the product, if this is DNA replication, the product is DNA. If it's transcription, the product is RNA. If it's translation, the product is a protein. But in each case, it's a polymer, and its sequence was determined by the sequence of the template. The molecular machine that carries out this process then, when it reaches the stop signals, it disassociates and it releases the um, completed product. So that's why it's really hard to keep them straight, because fundamentally they are very similar processes, but they have very different um, significances, very different roles in the cell. Now, I'm not going to go over them yet again in, as a vision of what we've done. Instead, what I want you to do when this video is over is to put your computer away, get out some paper and some colored pens, and diagram these processes yourself, putting on the correct labels. You can even try and simulate them with whatever you like, um, pieces of paper or anything, anything that will help you reinforce your understanding of these processes because we'll be talking them about them a lot in the next few weeks and they're really very very important but you can't really build the understanding you need just by listening to me talk to you and watching my pretty pictures you need to do this for yourself now coming up next we're going to start talking about chromosomes what they are how the genes are arranged on them what they do i hope to see you there